Hello again. Now we're going to go on with bleeding. Bleeding is a, a part of first aid that is very important. And the reason it's important is because the human body does not have an unlimited supply of blood. In actual fact, the human body holds about 8% of its body mass as blood volume. We as first aiders need to control the loss of blood to try and reduce the chances of the condition becoming worse. Sometimes it's not always possible to stop the bleeding because of the severity of the injury. So if as first aiders we have a goal of trying to slow the loss of blood, which is probably more achievable from a, a one day trained or two day trained first aider, opposed to stopping bleeding, we'll definitely achieve the goal that we set. We have adopted a very simple principle to treat a bleeding injury. And if we can adopt this principle, it makes your job that much easier. If we think of the color of blood, the color of blood is red. The word red is made up of three letters, R, E, and D. Those three letters remind us of what we need to do to treat a bleeding injury. The R standing for rest. By getting a casualty to rest who is suffering a bleeding injury, we will lower their heart rate, in turn reduce the amount of blood that has been lost. So it's very important to get our casualty to rest as soon as possible after you've identified the bleeding injury. We then move on to the E phase of the treatment. The E stands for elevate. If we can elevate the injured part, in this case the casualty has a bleeding injury to the right forearm. If we can elevate the injured part above the level of the heart, this will make it harder for the blood to be pumped into the injury, in turn reduce the amount of blood being lost. So we've now done rest and elevate. We move on to the D phase of the action plan. The D standing for direct pressure. By applying direct pressure over the injury, using a dressing, this will allow us to allow the blood to be soaked up. By applying pressure, will allow the blood to be slowed in the immediate vicinity from flowing out from the wound. Once we've applied the dressing, we then grab ourselves a bandage, and by applying the bandage over the top of the dressing, we can secure the dressing to the wound and allow the dressing to do its job. When we apply the, the bandage, we don't want to put too much pressure upon the wound, that way we may cut circulation off completely. But it needs to be firm enough so that we can slow the loss of blood. We secure the dressing using the bandage, and once we've done that, we slowly start to move our bandage up and down until we've completely covered the dressing and the wound site. Go all the way down and then pass a little bit past where we've finished the dressing and then we keep using the bandage until we've used it all up. Sometimes you get clips with bandages, you need to be careful of these clips because they could tear your gloves which in turn would allow you to come in contact with body fluid from the casualty. So clips they are there, but there's no, necessary, no real reason that we need to use the clips. And we can just tuck any excess bandage into the last fold, and that should stay there. Once we've applied the bandage, we want to make sure we've not put it on too tight. A very simple test we can do is go past where we've finished bandaging, away from the heart, and just apply some pressure to the skin. In this case, I'll do it to the fingernail. The fingernail should go white. When I release it, it will return back to its normal color in about two seconds. This test is designed so that we can check for capillary refill. This will enable us to determine whether there is still adequate blood flow past where we finish bandaging and that our bandage is not too tight. To sum up, the treatment of a bleeding injury. The colour of blood is red. That stands for rest, elevate, direct pressure. Get our casualty to rest, elevate the injured part using a dressing and a bandage as best you can over the top of the wound. Once we're finished, get it Elevate it above the heart, get the cage to relax, and if your common sense dictates to you that the wound is serious, you would then seek further medical advice.